Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's VC Task Force Gary's Picks event for events, investors and startups. My name is Joel Rosenberg, Director of Business Development and Strategy for VC Task Force. VC Task Force is an organization where the venture community comes together to address critical issues, provide workshops and other events for the benefit of the venture and entrepreneurial communities. VC Task Force provides access to an extensive ecosystem of VCs, corporate VCs and angel investors. You may ask questions at any time during the event, and time permitting, they will be answered live after today's interview. It is my pleasure to welcome Gary's Picks host, Gary Fowler. Gary is CEO and co-founder of GSD Venture Studios and award-winning Growth Stage AI Venture Studio. Gary is also co-founder of the award-winning AI startup, Eva.ai, as well as the investment firm, DY Investments. Today, Gary will be interviewing special guest, Deepak Jha, founder, CEO of Remote Symphony. The Remote Symphony platform takes any project or idea and turns it into reality without limits. Executing is as easy as booking an Uber. Remote Symphony is an AI-powered on-demand project execution platform without limits. Whenever you need a project done, just define a task and expectations of success, and Remote Symphony handles the rest. Remote Symphony offers benefits like flexible on-demand scaling, success-oriented black box, AI-empowered global talent, fractional pricing without lock-in, continuous monitoring, standardization of contracts, tiered resource pricing, project planning, and success management. Deepak brings two decades of experience working for industry-leading companies, including Gen General Electric, Accenture, Oracle, and Tata. He founded RemoteSymphony.com with the goal of how, revolutionizing how talent is sourced, onboarded, and deployed globally to overcome the chronic shortage of professional white-collared talent in finance, IT, accounting, and other lines of business. Take it away, Gary. Now, great. Thanks, Joel. Great to see you, Deepak. And as Joel said, my name is Gary Fowler, and I'm a serial entrepreneur investor. We love artificial intelligence, quantum computing, Metaverse Web3, and we believe that intellectual capacity is evenly spread around the world, but opportunities are not. And with that, uh, great to have you here, Deepak. So tell me a little bit about it. So what was it like going to the Birla Institute of Technology? Yeah, thank you, Gary, for having me here. Birla was one of the greatest place, A plus education, but uh, a++ party time. I was fortunate to have a similar experience in Kellogg, which you know is more famous as a party school. Uh, Birla Institute of Technology was no different. We had great education. I was introduced to a lot of great scientific concepts, engineering problem solving. But along that, that we had some humble ground to earth uh, people that I picked up lifelong friendship with that I still cherish and you are still there to cover my back when the need arises. Oh, that's, you know, so you went to uh, Northwestern University to Kellogg. So what were you doing before Remote Symphony? Because you said you have 20 years worth of experience, but you've been working with Remote Symphony about five years. What were you doing before that? Great question. I was a typical state corporate executive bouncing around from one job to another in corporate America. I was fortunate to have worked in uh, project management extensively uh, in development, engineering, support, consulting of IT and software. Uh, I have even done sales. And uh, for the last 15 years prior to found, founding Remote Symphony, I was largely executing uh, major initiatives, digital transformations, as well as go-to-market strategy by virtue of selling the products that we were building. Uh, it's interesting. So, you know, when you went down through, what were the lessons that you learned at Northwestern that helped you with Remote Symphony? Yeah, so believe it or not, uh, Kellogg is not typically, or Northwestern is not typically known as an entrepreneurial school. Typically, you would think maybe Stanford, Berkeley, Haas as more uh, geared towards entrepreneurship. But Kellogg was quite instrumental in helping me teach marketing, which is the foundation for most of our demand creation in terms of how to sell whatever widget we are building. So I would tell that, I would share that this whole concept of product market fit, 
uh, for which the entrepreneurial world aspires to get it easy, I have learned some cool tricks inside of uh, Kellogg to still re reach the clients, keep myself very close to the voice of the customer, if you will, and get the right product market fit. So uh, everything I have learned or I'm doing thus far, I owe it back to my school. No, that's great. And so, you know, so, you know, how did you come up with the idea of Remote Symphony? Where, when did you come up with that? Because if you look at uh, outsourcing, that's been around a long time. But what made you decide to come up with the idea of Remote Symphony? Yes, very true, Gary. As a matter of fact, the company I founded prior to Remote Symphony, which is DAJ, is also in the outsourcing world. And funny you mentioned that outsourcing has been there forever, almost 30 years not a whole lot of change has happened in that industry. And Remote Symphony is an epiphany where we are going to change that uh, industry because typically if you think of outsourcing, it is still putting a lot of bodies, getting immigrants or getting projects done outside of United States into more labor arbitrage countries. And that forms the backbone other than that, there has not been a whole lot of innovation, whether it is in the business model, whether it is in the pricing, whether it is in the adoption of uh, AI and machine learning to the automation that we see. So in that respect, Remote Symphony is very different. And while I was running the company predecessor to Remote Symphony that I founded, I have learned a lot of inefficiencies in traditional outsourcing where it is more about putting bodies at work, not so much about the business model innovation as to how you can do the pricing innovation or how you can do a lot of standardization uh, of work units. So what Remote Symphony really is all about is simplifying uh, the day-to-day white collared projects, ideas into simplified execution. And what Remote Symphony does is it uh, takes away a lot of the challenges that we issue or that we learn or run into in traditional outsourcing. And that is what we are doing at Remote Symphony. No, that sounds great. How's business? Business has certainly slowed down, but fortunately we are in a sector that will now be the scape for corporate America in in the sense that when layoffs are happening in corporate America, they are still saddled with the same amount of work. Their work is not being reduced. It's just unfortunate that the human talent, the human power is being let go, but the managers and the directors are still on the hook for the same delivery uh, to stay competitive and ahead of the market to keep their customers happy and the likes. Uh, so we anticipate the layoffs to be translating into more business for us because we simplify execution and there is no escape from execution in corporate America when it comes to turning an idea into reality or taking experimentation and going through them. Those are some of the value add that we bring to table and it's almost the inflection point is happening where the slowness is getting translated into more business for us. No, that's great. And so what is the state of the market right now? Deepak, how is it out in Silicon Valley? Uh, sorry, ask the question again, please. What is, what's the state of the market in Silicon Valley? What's the temperature? Because we hear a lot of things about Silicon Valley Bank, it's First Republic and layoffs, but what is it? What's it really feel like today? Yeah, you know, so the sentiment that we are facing in Silicon Valley is more or less the same that we are seeing throughout United States, which is people are unsure which way we are headed. More people are convinced the doom and gloom and the repeat of 2008 uh, that is happening with the banking meltdown. And people are worried if this is again yet another Lehman Brothers uh, scenario that we are hitting. Uh, but the reality is uh, there is no escape in a way from what we call recession that is Powell induced recession and Fed is in no good outcome here. If they don't cut the interest rate or if they increase the interest rate, we are doomed either way. So, so the sentiment among my friends and family members is quite skittish and we hope that the situation improves sooner than later. Well, I mean, one of the things you're doing remote symphony 
to get the right source resources, the right place at the right time to be able to do the same level of jobs is really important, right? Because they have less money and they got to do the same amount, just like you're saying, they have mandates. So that's really important. Where do you look, where, where, if you look at this globally, what markets do you see as really uh, being appropriate for remote symphony? Is it the European market or is it the Asian market? Where do you see the growth? So the growth that we anticipate is by model one United States, hands down being the capitalist country that we are, we would be the first ones to uh, get sort of labor arbitrage while still keeping our productivity high. And the second mode that we are seeing are mostly these up and coming Asian countries, Southeast Asian countries, whether it is Philippines or Malaysia, Indonesia, Hong Kong, Singapore, we are seeing a lot of uh, growth there itself. And so why is it, what's happened to Hong Kong and Singapore? So the in interesting thing about them is they are more in need of modernization. They have older and archaic systems in place. And with some of the uh, economy growth that they are having, they are redoing their infrastructure, their IT infrastructure, and bringing in a lot of new fiber, new telecom, new software, uh, new cloud-related infrastructure, and the whole digital transformation. And that is what is uh, seeing trickling growth for us. Well, that's great. And so what do you see happen in Remote Symphony over the next year? What's your anticipation? Because I know you were talking so, about growing over to 5 million. Does it still look like that? Or what's it? What's yeah, it yeah. We did 3 million this year, this past year, 2.5. Mm -hmm. And we are absolutely on target to reach 5 million. And the interesting thing that we are expecting, Gary, is an unintended consequence of recession is when the recession wanes, there is a lot of pent up demand that uh, frees up a lot and lot demand for us. So I'm expecting we may overshoot 5 million just because when we come out of recession, the pent demand, pent up demand will work in our favor. Yeah, no, you're right about it. I mean, the thing is, you got to go in a different direction in the market. And, you know, how do you compare to like an Upworks? How do you compare with somebody that's out there doing outsourcing? So the one is, how do you compare with Upworks, right? And how would you compare to a typical outsourcing company? Great question, Gary. Let me quickly share an analogy that will help clarify this distinction. Um, let's take the analogy of Uber. Whenever you need to go to a destination like the airport or the uh, office, you can call Uber without worrying about who the driver is, what kind of vehicle are you getting, is the vehicle clean, is the driver uh, having all clean records, no DUI, nothing. Will the vehicle get you to the destination? Will you be on time? What's the fare if you have to cross the toll bridges? Who pays? The whole nine yards in terms of the heavy listing and the logistics is left to Uber as an organization to take you from destination A to destination B. And that's exactly what we do in Remote Symphony. Projects are very easy. Executing projects are massively difficult. And what Remote Symphony is doing is simplify the whole execution of projects and ideas to as easy as calling an Uber. So in that regards, we are there is no comparison with the likes of Upwork. Upwork can all take care of the last mile. What we call the last mile is once the entire project has been demystified in terms of de-risking it and coming up with the best scope, the schedule, the budget, then a service provider can execute it at which point uh, Remote Symphony is done with its work. Now it's handing over the, the work to affiliates who will execute that. So we are, we are not even upwards on steroids. It's like we are upwards in a different orbit. Coming to the typical outsourcing um, companies, again, it's very different. We are very much user of generative AI. We are very much chat GPT. We are very much about... AI ML data science built in our uh, product. It's a product and platform play, less so of a services and a manpower play. So in that regards, we are different from traditional outsourcing also. So what's this generative AI you're working on that? What is, how are you using that? Yeah, so what we have done is 
typically uh, because of our years of experience, three plus years in uh, DAG, which is the predecessor to Remote Symphony, we have done 70, 80 projects worldwide. And we are using all the learning from those projects in IT, finance, and accounting to train the uh, generative AI, the large language models, LLMs, uh, like chat GPT to our advantage where we have the capability that you can come to our prompt and give a give an idea of a project you want to do. For example, I want to open a yoga site. And we will on the fly give you the scope, the schedule, the budget, and even the talent needed to bring up such a website. So that's kind of a transformational thing because if you think in today's world, it would take you anywhere from a month to three months to get your idea. So you're ready. scoping it out right away for them. Right away on the fly. For now, them. do you give them guaranteed pricing on the deal or how does it work when you do you give oh, them yeah. pricing? Pricing, not only guaranteed pricing, we give pricing completely aligned to them because we don't charge an arm and leg for a work. We just charge enough to keep our lights on. The major money transfer happens to us from our client on the successful delivery of the project. So we defer all of our uh, gross margin, for lack of a better word, until the work gets delivered and the client signs off on the dotted line. Unlike traditional consulting and outsourcing, which charge you like a TNM, time and material, where they're incentivized to extend a project as long as one can. Unlike that, for us, the incentive is more about how quickly can we deliver the results. So the quicker we deliver the result, the faster we get paid. No, that's great. Quicker the results, faster get paid. I bet the people are moving. And, yes. and I bet your uh, people that are doing the work like it too. They probably give them a bonus to get them excited to get the work done, right? Right on, Gary. That's great. So what do you look at? What companies are the most interesting uh, that would, if you could have a wish list, what would the company profile of a company that could be interesting for remote symphony? What would they look like? Yeah, so a company which is massively into projects, for example, any of the Fortune 2000 companies, Fortune 500 companies, which look at big problems, whether it is finance, IT, accounting, interdisciplinary problems, or uh, problems that are not just one silo, but spread across multiple lines of business, finance, IT, accounting, marketing, HR, those kind of projects are ideal for a company like Remote Symphony because we are able to uh, take a crack at these multi-year long projects, multi-quarter long projects and decipher it into very manageable bite-sized sub-steps and steps like what you call WBS, work breakdown structure. And we are able to parcel it off to a combination of man and machine where we delegate these small pieces of work to humans for the work that they do the best versus the machine for what they do the best. Whether you want to categorize these division of labor in terms of highly intellectually challenging thinking strategy kind of work to the humans, but a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of mundane, monotonous, repetitious analytics, those kind of work can go to the machine. So typically my wish list would be to work with, for example, Tesla, General Electric, uh, companies who have a lot of well-regulated process. Those would be my ideal customers to work for. Tesla, General Electric, General Motors, those kind of companies. Oracle. What about the international companies? Deepak, what are you doing with international companies right now? Yeah, yeah. International company is very welcome, typically, because uh, I don't mean to say that they lack the process, but they definitely lack some of the rigor in terms of uh, operations and the QA and the success management, the layers that we have. We have lots of checks and balances in place. So, for example, European companies, even companies in Africa, which may not have some of the infrastructure, we can do complex projects for them. And we would love to take our projects international with them, not only for sharing what we know, but to learn from them the kind of projects they work on, how that can educate our AI models and make them more 
encompassing more robust. So we do definitely need that diversity of projects. So you like diverse projects. Is there any one particular sector you're interested in more than others? I think IT makes the natural cut uh, just because a lot of work tends to happen as bespoke. And, and our solution is the perfect nemesis for bespoke. Believe it or not, a lot of IT work is still- well, let's talk about what's bespoke so the audience knows what bespoke is. Yeah, sorry, I should have explained that. By bespoke mean uh, a project that is very tailor-made and very custom-made to company A, and it cannot be just yanked from company A and mimicked or cookie-cutter approach in company B, company C, company D. So you cannot have build once and leverage multiple times. That is what I call bespoke. Whereas in our model, 60 to 70% of the work that is done bespoke in one client can be translated into success at another client, just because a lot of the uh, project uh, planning, project execution, those skills remain with us. So what I forgot to say, uh, Gary, in the earlier conversation is Remote Symphony is a lot about standardization, is a lot about uh, doing once and repeating it multiple times. And that kind of a work model is very suited for uh, replicating what is called bespoke because bespoke still has a lo lot of usable components uh, where we build once and use it multiple times. No, that sounds great. Well, it sounds like you're moving in the right direction. And, and what about competitors out there? Do you have many competitors? Because I have never heard of a company that's using this team approach. I mean, in one sense, you're a technology company because you're coming up with what the company actually needs to be able to get the task done. Uh, but are there any co uh, competitors out there for what you do? Is Upwork a competitor or not? No, Upwork and all are very dumbed down version of what we do. They, they wouldn't be, like we are light years ahead of what they are doing. They are more about throwing bodies at a problem we are more about throwing technology at a problem. So that way we have a distinction. I'm sure, Gary, with the uh, rise of LLMs and chat GPTs and AI ML, everyone is trying to get a piece of action, a piece of pie. So we are not naive in thinking that we don't have competition. Uh, I think we have stiff competition. It is not visible yet because not many people have come out in the market with their offering. So in that respect, we may have a first mover advantage, uh, but we definitely have competition yet to be found out. No, that's great. And it's, uh, you know, the world truly is your oyster and you got to go for the oyster. Sometimes people forget, Deepak, you know, you got to get that Ferrari out of the garage and get it moving. You know, yeah, Gary, with oyster. help from you and VC Task Force, if you guys keep uh, giving us some forum to present our ideas, that Ferrari will absolutely go for a spin very soon. Yeah, no, it's great. Well, you're doing a great job. So what are the closing thoughts if for entrepreneurs that you see around the world? If you look at it from your, your 20 years worth of experience, uh, going to Kellogg, what are some words of wisdom that you would tell other startupers just like yourself when you're starting a company? You know, some of them are 20, some of them are 50. But what are the, what would you tell them? What's the most important three pieces they need to understand when they're doing a startup. Three words of wisdom they would give me. Yeah, absolutely. The first is conserve cash to the best of your ability. The more frugal you are with your ideas implementation, the better off you are. Uh, the second piece of advice I would have is surround yourself with a lot of intelligent and smart people, people who know and have seen the world in the entrepreneurial setup more than you have, so surround yourself with fellow entrepreneurs. And my third piece of advice would be, uh, over the six to eight months when the general wisdom says that it's a very fearful time in the market, in the economy, I would say as an entrepreneur, these are the best time that you have because innovation will see us through the tough times and you, Mr. Entrepreneur, Miss Entrepreneur, you create innovation. So you have nothing to fear, but a lot of good things to happen in your endeavors. No, that sounds great. Well, Deepak, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. 
Uh, you've thank got you. an thank exciting company. Me, yeah. I like the name Remote Symphony because I always think of symphony orchestra and you're the conductor bringing yes. it together for everybody. So thank you for the time. Thanks to my audience again for joining one more time, Gary's Picks. And I'm your host, Gary Fowler. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. Over to you, Joel. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Gary and, and Deepak. Excellent, uh, really insightful and very timely, uh, the work that you're doing there. Uh, I too, I agree, Remote Symphony is a great name. And uh, uh, I think the audience really appreciates uh, uh, the information that was gleaned today. So uh, as Gary mentioned, we'll be back in two weeks for the next uh, edition of Gary's Picks event. Until then, everybody stay well and take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Right, See you, Deepak. See you, Joe. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.